I'm honestly not sure how today's project's going to work out because I'm going out of my comfort zone, but we'll find out. So a few weeks ago, Marcel, uh, who you may have seen down in my comments previously, started a little, I guess, uh, I don't know, project or something with a few other YouTubers. And he's asked me if I want to pick up the challenge too. So sure. What he's done is he's uh, put, pulled together some stuff from a few other places, uh, pulled it all together into a good set of instructions on how to build a YouTube subscriber counter using one of these modules. This is based on the 7219 chip and it is a, what do we got here? Eight, uh, seven segment LED display. Now that's the same chip that's running. Oops, zoom out. It's the same chip that's running this guy here. Um, so it's basically just serial data in and a clock in and power and a chip select. And it just ripples the serial data through and lights up the LEDs. So that's easy enough. Um, obviously I've played with them before. The other part of it though is uh, his project using a uh, Wemos D1 Mini, which I don't have. I have a full size D1, but that gets a little bit cumbersome, but the important part of any of these Wemos D1 boards is the ESP8266 that's at the guts of it. And that I have a bare one of, which makes it a much more reasonable size for putting inside something. And I have also got these little baseboards because, uh, there's a couple of things going on with these. First of all, they don't fit a standard pin spacing um, that breadboards and head, pin headers and everything else fits. So these little mo uh, modules here, well, it's not really a module, uh, it's just an expansion uh, board, and conversion board. It allows you to solder that down and get a standard pin out there. So that's the first thing I'm going to do, which is just a quick little soldering project and hope I don't burn anything out. Then I'm going to load up the software that he's, that he provided. I'm not going to go through all the steps that, that Marcel uh, laid out in his thing. I'll just link to it, uh, probably up there and also down in the comments, uh, not the comments, the description. Although I'm sure Marcel will chime in in the comments cause he's good like that. Um, so I'm not going to repeat everything that he did. Um, the, if there's places where I've diverged from what he did, like using the bare ESP8266, technically I mean, ESP8266 is a whole family of them. This is the ESP12 variant specifically. No, I'm not sure why I've never actually used one of these things. Well, that's not entirely true. I did play with one of these before, but I blew it up because I think I didn't respect the voltage. Um, something like that. Anyway. It uh, literally started letting smoke out of it. So it's in my bucket of shame. I'll try not to do it with this one. Though if I do, hopefully I can figure it out before I blow up my second one. They're shockingly cheap. And so what I'm going to do with this is I think I'm going to put it inside this case just down there when I'm done. Because there should be enough room inside there, I think. I'm sure somebody's going to be asking, am I going to use the ESP to also run that? No, I'm not. The reason being that I change every week or every video. Um, so I want to leave it on something that's really easy to change with a USB. doesn't need external or anything else. This thing, you need an external uh, USB to serial converter to talk to it. Something like one of these here. And you need one that you can select to go down to 3.3 volts so it doesn't burn it out. So we'll need that. I think that's everything. Oh, and of course the code. But. So I'm just going to start throwing this together and I mean, you've seen soldering. I'll, I'll describe what I've, what I've done once I've done it. First of all, since I'm going to be powering it from five volts, it's already inside the sign. And the ESP only runs on 3.3 volts. I need a buck converter. 
So that's what this is. I'm going to use it to power both the sign and, or both the ESP and this. Hopefully this thing will run happily on 3.3 volts. I think it will. Um, and because there's only one power connection, one ground connection on here, I've just wide them off the back of this guy here. So one will go to each. Um, I've obviously soldered the breakout board onto the ESP and I've added uh, pins to the transmit and receive data for connecting my serial adapter onto just to make it convenient. I don't think that's going to stick up too high and cause problems. It's not any higher than those anyway, or not significantly. So that's where I'm at right now. Um, I guess I should power this guy from five volts and set it to my 3.3 before I connect it to there. That would be clever, wouldn't it? 3.2. Two nine, 3.3 volts. Close enough anyway. So that should power the thing up and not blow anything up. Okay, here's my kind of janky setup for programming it. But it seems to be working and it says done uploading. So I found these instructions in various places on the internet. Basically you have to, to put it into programming mode, you have to take GPI zero to ground and GPI 015 to ground and GPI 02 to VCC and the chip, the CH underscore PD, this one here, uh, to high. So two and PD go high, zero and 15 go low. Then you connect the TX to RX and RX to TX from your serial port thing and you let her buck. And it takes quite a while compared to just a simple little Arduino sketch because there's a lot in this sketch. So next, I guess we'll see if it works. So I'll disconnect and you know, I'll power it off and disconnect all these programming wires and see what happens. Okay, I've got all the programming stuff out of the way now. And I'm just going to check this guy, make sure the program took. So I will power him on. The blue light flashing, that means it's trying to connect. And the serial monitor shows that it is trying to connect to my Wi-Fi, which at the moment is called Keep Out. And it's trying. Connecting. Okay, so it's attempting to connect. It says connecting. And it seems to just have a whole bunch of dots. It's supposed to eventually print connected. Yeah, there we go. Every half second, it's just doink, 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 doink like that. I don't know how long it's supposed to go. So it's trying to connect. That's a good sign. It's awake. It should print the hello message. Okay, well, let's connect that. So one, one thing to keep an eye out for if you're using just a bare chip rather than the Wemos um, is the pin numbers don't quite match up. So the sketch is looking for data on D4 of the Wemos, but D4 of the Wemos is actually GPIO2 of the actual ESP. So the, the Arduino IDE, I guess, uh, does some data translation between the physical GPIO pins on the ESP266, ESP12, and the actual Wemos, and they're labeled how they show up in the IDE. So, something to keep in mind. Okay, um, I've got this wired up now. So, if I power it on, this thing should say, 
Hello. And it does. Excellent. Okay, so the only thing left, I mean, now it's showing zeros because it doesn't have a subscriber count yet. Because it hasn't connected properly to my Wi-Fi yet. Which I think is because I may have spelled the password wrong. I gotta go digging through the code. And I'm not gonna show you my password in the code. So just hang on. Okay, there we go. Uploading. See the blue light flashing, 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 flashing. When it stops flashing there, we should be programmed. Yes, it says 100% over there. Excellent. Okay. Now that should hopefully have the right password in there. Let's see what happens when I reconnect everything. Oh yeah, so to, to, dis er, to reprogram it, I needed two of the pins that go to the display. I needed uh, GPO IO zero and two to be one tide high and one tide low to make this work. GPIO zero has to go low. So I disconnected them from that just so that they wouldn't cause any problems, but I clipped them a little bit long so that I would know what color goes back where to make it just easier so I don't have to think. I'll just undo all this mess and I'll be right back. Okay, let's see if this guy's going to work. Put power on over there. I have my hello that's blinking. Is it trying to connect? It's connecting. It's trying to connect. It's got an IP address. Woohoo! Now, is it going to get my subscriber count? Wonder how long that takes. Oh, there it is. It's got my subscriber count. 2533. Is that correct? It is. It is correct. Oh, that's excellent. All right. That's the, that's the, the tricky part. The rest of this is all just mechanical mounting it inside the box. Okay. So the next, the next step, to figure out how to get it into here which shouldn't be all that difficult. Partly because this is relatively fresh in my mind. It wasn't that long ago that I did this. So I should be able to pick off five volts from just about anywhere in there and feed it into the, uh, into the buck converter. Oh, that could be an issue. These I can just stick onto the back here with hot glue. That's not a different, not an issue. Um, I'm gonna pick up power off there, but will this guy fit? Uh, dots go to the bottom. Okay. <laughs> the janky way would be to just bend those pins up. I might try that. See if I can get them to bend up without becoming destroyed. Well, that's not too bad. Okay, I'm just gonna do that. They don't, ooh, but I don't wanna pull the, oh, right, those boards come off the LCD, yeah, the LEDs, don't they? Okay, so I've got all those pins up and out of the way. Next, to fit this guy down in here, and I've got to make some holes, I guess. Um, mark the top edge. Try and mark the edges of the LCD. So I'm going to use my little drill and drill a couple of holes through to mark it from the other side, and then I can get a better mark on it. And I think I'll take my tape off the front here so I don't mangle it. Okay, so I've got the four corners of that LED module marked out. Now I'll just draw a line and use my Dremel to cut them out. Oh, and I did decide to pull those modules off just to make it easier so I wouldn't destroy them and the wires and everything. And then just plug back on, that's easy. So a bit of Dremeling and I'll be right back.
it's just a little saw blade. It does a pretty good job. Just got to finish it off with the knife a little bit in the corners and stuff. I have a hole. That's pretty good. And from the back, yeah, that also looks pretty good. Okay, so I shall stick that in there with the traditional hot glue and then throw these modules back in and then figure out where I'm going to glue those on, pick up some power, getting close. These guys back on. Hopefully, I didn't bend any pins too badly. Nice. Okay, that's back on there. Now then, how am I going to arrange this? So those can go there and incoming power can come from over there right blob oh yeah something else that I checked the nothing is higher than the middle or the seam in the box so it should all just go back together without worrying about shorting out which is excellent. I hadn't really thought about that previously. Yeah, I think that's good. Now then I'll just tack these two power wires on to, I guess I'll just pick them up off those last two pins there. That should be adequate. Um, yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, I was right. That works so much better when I don't have witnesses. Now, just to put it all back together and hopefully all this wire goes in. Yeah, that's tight. I think maybe these little loopy jumpers I'll push back down there. And that seems to work. Where's the screws? Throw this on, throw another one on. Like I said, I've already, it's already paid for. It's paid for its self in my car repair and not getting a fine for a broken tail light. All right, let's plug it in and see what happens. It says hello. And there's that part. That's good. Now then, oh, it's flickery. Of course it's flickery. It is multiplexed. What happens if I zoom out? It's still flickery. Oh, man. Is that going to annoy you guys over time? Hope not. Just wait for it to update here. Oh, there it is. Hey, and I got another subscriber since, uh, since I first tested this thing. Excellent. So there's what it looks like pretty much square on. It's a view that you're almost never going to get. But the normal view is back here. So a bunch of thank yous on this one. Thanks to Marcel from Marcel's workshop for suggesting this and nudging me and actually nudging a bunch of people to, to uh, put these together. Um, I think gadget reboots working on, on one, he may get his uh, video published first. I might get mine published first. I know we both started on it just about the same time. Um, Pat Lapp, uh, AKA the woodpecker or Le Pic Bois. Um, he's a woodworking channel. He's, he's where I saw it first. I was watching him doing his thing and I uh, said, Hey, wait a minute. I know that Marcel guy. So 
And here we are. Uh, who else? Uh, Brian Wow. Um, he wrote the JSON library that's in this thing. And he's got an excellent channel that you should check out. Um, who else? Oh, Electro Noobs. They wrote the majority of the software and, um, and the, uh, tiny little schematic that, uh, that I showed. And they're the ones that kind of put the basis of the project together. Um, so all these people combined and probably a few others that I'm forgetting are responsible for a whole bunch of YouTubers having a little, uh, counter like that now. And of course, thanks to all of you guys for watching. Um, I always appreciate that. And I appreciate uh, hearing from you down in the comments. Thanks again. And I will talk to you later.